Hey guys, Thing Fishy here with episode 6 of my in-depth parrying tutorial series. The series that digs a little deeper into parrying and gives you specific input timings for attacks. For those of you for which the standard blanket parrying advice isn't quite working yet. And today I'm going to be covering the Grafted Scion, a boss which I'd highly recommend a parrying approach for, even if your build isn't specifically set up for this. Now before we get started, I just want to mention a couple of things. First off, I'm using the Golden Parry Ash of War here. And for those of you following my Elden Ring Parry Guide series, this may surprise you. And I'm going to make a separate video about why I chose this and why I'd recommend this Ash of War for this fight specifically. Now although I'm doing ranged parries here with the Ash of War, the same timing will work for either the Buckler or Karian Retaliation too. Secondly, this version of this enemy in the tutorial area is a bit of a pushover. He doesn't have a lot of HP at all, so I'm using my unupgraded parrying dagger in my right hand here, as I kept accidentally killing him with my Misericord. There are far more powerful versions of this enemy in the game, but none who have such a beautiful arena, so I chose this one for this video. Okay, let's get to it. So his most common attack, and by far the easiest to parry, is this horizontal swing attack. Your timing for this is right here as his bottom hand begins to move towards you. Next up we have this stab attack. This is pretty quick, but can be parried successfully by pulling the trigger here, when the hilt of his sword is level with his head. Now for his jumping attack. Now, unlike a lot of other jumping attacks in Elden Ring, this can be parried. Your input needs to be right here, just as his feet leave the ground. Now for the fast twirling combo. He actually has two different versions of this combo. One where his wind up is very low to the ground, as you can see here. The other where he stands right up really tall for the wind up. Now for the low version, you want to input here as his body begins to move to the left. And for the high version, you want to parry here, when his hands are at their highest point. The other attack that works really well for parrying is this final attack of his fast stabbing combo. You parry the final two-handed attack by parrying here when you see both of his swords at their highest point. So like some other bosses we've covered in this series, every attack we've covered so far is the first attack for one of his combos. But as far as I can tell from fighting this guy for a while, pretty much every attack he has is parryable. So there's loads of combos where, should you miss your first parry, it's very easy to tank the hit and parry the second, third or even fourth attack in the chain. Some good options here include parrying the second attack of this twirling combo by inputting here, as both swords pass the 12 o'clock position. Or this fourth hit of his standard combo by parrying when you see his right hand begin to move. Now whether this approach is actually a good idea or not will depend on your stats and which version of this enemy you're fighting so I'll leave that up to you to judge. Now for his unparryable attacks, and it's pretty much the best news possible here, as they're all easily readable and avoidable just by giving him some room. Back up to avoid his screaming attack, dodge away or into his shield bash attack when it begins to move towards you, simply walk backwards to avoid his stomping attack, or his well telegraphed shield slam and just run away from this scary looking helicopter attack and that's it how to parry the grafted scion this enemy is made so much easier by adopting a parrying strategy for it and even more so if you utilize the golden parry if you want to see me talk a little bit more about that make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss that upcoming golden parry video as always guys, thanks for watching, see you soon.